Megalithic Star Maps with Martin Green, Part 3. You are listening to Brothers of the Serpent Podcast. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, angels and demons and monsters and serpents. This is Brothers of the Serpent Podcast, and we are coming to you not live from the 10 by 10 by 10 Tangent Cube of Science, where we are nestled amongst the dusty bones of an ancient seabed high atop the Edwards Plateau. I think this is going to be the last normal episode we record before heading to Egypt. We're leaving on the 4th of uh, of February, and we'll be gone for about six weeks. So we will be making content while we're in Egypt and posting it, but it will not be like normal episodes. Um, So we're glad to have... Martin Green back with us for part three of Megalithic Star Maps. How you doing, buddy? Uh, fine, thank you, and uh, welcome, everyone. Yeah, so the last two have gone over well. I think uh, I think you've been doing a fantastic job yep. of thank getting you your material much. across. Yeah, I'm not totally convinced on some of the things you pointed out, but hey, <laughs> that's how it always happens with this stuff, right? You're yeah, speculating, that's, that's you're fine. you're running that's ideas fine. past people, and you know, you can't always yeah. convince everybody of everything. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm convinced. Kyle, Kyle's buying it, 100%. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm totally convinced about the basic star map. There's yes. some of the other things that... Uh, uh, I've got a measuring scale, actually, which I'll introduce about halfway through this. Uh, um, you might be... Uh, it might amuse you. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm ready. Let's lay it on okay. us. Okay. Let's go, then. Yeah. So, share screen. I don't want that bit of the screen. <laughs> that was the Discord, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, <laughs> join the Discord. <laughs> right. So, you've got that, I guess? Yes. Yorkshire yeah. Megalithic Complex Part 3. Yeah. So, this is Troy's picture, which I, I think it's a brilliant picture. Uh, it gives you a, it. A, a proper feeling of the, um, of the stones and the, uh, particularly the hinges, actually. And I'll yeah. cover that in a so I just want to bring you uh, a bit of the story so far. There's only a couple of slides on this, and we'll whip through them. So we started talking about the Thornborough Henges uh, and the Devil's Arrows, which is a, a row of stones uh, near the small town of Borough Bridge. Uh, and if you remember, I mentioned what a henge was. So anyone picking this up as the first time in Episode 3, a henge doesn't have stones in it. It's uh, an embankment uh, with a ditch and a raised centre. Um, now, while we're on here, there's just two or three little stories I want to mention about these. Uh, so, wondered forever what uh, these things are really, what they intended them to do. Uh, and obviously the uh, uh, standard model. Uh, says that they're ceremonial in some way. Uh, And indeed they could be, because I guess we're about the least religious um, uh, generation that there's ever been. And if you go back 100, 200 years in uh, in our history, every small town had at least one church and maybe many, so they could be ceremonial. Um, But... It's interesting, actually, that the Devil's Arrows sit just about on top of a geological fault. Um, Now, geological faults in in Yorkshire, there's quite a lot of them. Uh, But they're not very active, so it's not like sitting it on Los Angeles one expecting to get some energy through your stones, (laughs) because you're not going to (laughs) do Uh, But who knows, maybe in the past, maybe they were more active. Uh, So the first little story is um, I I had a dream when I was going through this. It wasn't that long, actually, maybe about three months ago. Uh, And I'd been doing Shannon's remote viewing exercise thing. On the, on the Discord. Oh. Uh, 
and the dream just appeared as though I was remote viewing it. I was sort of floating in the air just to the south of the Devil's Arrows. And it was night and the fires burning and uh, um, I think the, the moon was there and maybe the sun had just set. Uh, and then there was this absolutely horrific scream. Uh, yeah. So it's sort of a girl's voice and that woke me up and it didn't go any further. Mm. <laughs> wow. But I don't know whether there was a... Well, you never know whether dreams are anything or nothing and most people would say they're not, but... I just thought, you know, it was an interesting little story. The other one uh, I think is maybe more interesting. Uh, about six years ago, I had a minor heart attack, so I've been monitoring my blood pressure ever since, uh, just measuring it a couple of times a day. Uh, and about two years ago, uh, it was just after COVID, actually, so it was maybe three years ago. Um, when I first did a trip to cover all of these and go around them all, uh, I was going through a phase when it was really difficult controlling it. And it was up and down and all over the place. And I was being to the doctors a few times. And they were, you know, don't know what to do type thing. We don't want to change your medication yet. <laughs> blah, 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 you know. Anyway, so I went to the Devil's Arrows and then I went to Thornborough and I walked all around Thornborough, the full length of it, backwards and forwards. Uh, and at Thornborough, you get a real feeling of relaxation. It's, mm. I mean, that was probably helped because it was a nice sunny day. Uh, but you get this real feeling of relaxation. I went home, measured blood pressure, and it was back to normal. And it has been ever since. Wow. Damn. So, what? Who knows? Maybe there's something in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so we talked about. So, for two. Wait, 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 wait. For yeah, two hold on, years. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> for two years, it's been normal after that? Or... Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it goes, up, it goes up and down. When you're my age, it does go up and down. But, you know, uh, if I'm sitting and relaxing, it's all pretty good. Wow. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Right, so we started off by thinking that the uh, the henges represented Orion's belt, and then the question was, do uh, the devil's arrows represent any uh, of the stars that are around Orion's belt? Uh, and we looked at Pleiades and Hyades, which are this bit round here, around uh, the uh, head of Taurus. Uh, and then eventually came to this as a star map where the circles, the uh, hinges, and the stars are obviously the stars. And this group down here is the devil's arrows. So I would contend that that's about as accurate as you're ever going to get. Uh, and the statistics seem to uh, agree with that. Did you ever, did you ever, one second, did you ever check to see if any of the other stars, if that is the belt, any of the other stars in Orion, for example? Uh, yeah, I, I've been through it and there's some suggestions that there's down be just about here, it's this side of the river. Yeah. Uh, there's an old folly that would be where um, an old, beetle, an old what? Is, an old folly. So, uh, old. The Lord of the Manor used to, when in times were bad in, in the UK and people were starving, uh, sometimes the Lord of the Manor would employ the local men to build something for him. Ah. Uh, and this was a tower that was built. Uh, but it's exactly where Beetlejuice would be. Hmm. And then further round, somewhere around here it'd be, uh, I found uh, some fairly early test LiDAR stuff that showed something that looked a bit like a henge, which was where, I can't remember which star it was, but one of the other stars. Um, and there's a quarry where another one is on this bit. So it looks as though this part might have been, uh, uh, they might have done some work on it, but... Just... The other side, there's nothing. Okay, so there, it's possible Actually, that there were... it's not quite true that there's nothing because 
there's a farmer over here that says that he's discovered stuff in his field hmm. and there would be a star roughly where he discovered this stuff. Ah. Uh, you know. But nothing substantial, but possibly substantial. possibly something so old that it's just been farmed yeah. over or built over yeah, and it's yeah. gone now. I yeah. mean, I think as you've seen on some of the pictures of the other hinges, I mean, I yeah. have not grown them, but a lot of them are just crop marks now. So, right. you know, you don't have to go far from being a crop mark to not be able to see it at all. Yes, yeah. Uh, I've, I mean, at the time I thought it might be, but... I've not been convinced enough to do any slides for this. Okay. So I've left it out. So the second episode then, uh, if you remember, we had this layout on the ground where I would have expected it to be north, south, east, west somehow or other, but it's not. So this angle is 141 degrees and this is 151. And the question that we started with was, why those two angles? Uh, so we talked about uh, this angle here, which uh, Canaban is Alderbaran in the uh, Starmer. Uh, and that angle picks out the southernmost rise of Alderbaran. Uh, and that's in 9,600, 9,700 BC, which, of course, is the end of the Younger Dryas and Plato's date for um, uh, the end of uh, Atlantis. So there's some significance there. Um, whether or not it's why that was laid out that way, I don't know. We then went on to look at uh, in more detail about this line here and this is the exact halfway point and we pick up the uh, a right angle from the halfway point and it goes out this way towards the uh, summer solstice sunrise now if i back up that line it runs right down here about 100 feet from ripon cathedral southern door and then back down here to another stone on the moors. Uh, and there's some significance in the length of the lines. So if you're interested, go and watch episode two. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully they've also... started from episode one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Preferably. <laughs> <laughs> Part one. We also talked about the legend, which is uh, of how this got built, which uh, is the devil was standing on Howe Hill, which is here. Um, and he threw rocks uh, and they landed where the devil's arrows are and became the devil's arrows. And there's an extended story of that where he was, his feet were sinking into the, uh, into the rock as he melted it. Uh, but then we discovered that there was uh, a, a chapel on top of uh, Howe Hill, uh, which uh, was St. Michael's. And of course, St. Michael killed the devil in uh, in legend and in revelations in the Bible. So we went on to suggest that there might be some significance in that. Might not be, but there might be. Real quick, is there any volcanism around the area anywhere? No, no volcanism at all. And I'll mention that later on. It today. just it just occurred to me that like this yeah, story of stones. of yeah. the devil yeah. throwing it sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah. His but, feet are uh, melting the stone, and he's tossing stones out. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll come back to the lack of volcanism. Okay. Uh, not very long. Uh, so we talked about the location being special. Uh, so it's. 10% of the Earth's circumference from the North Pole. It's 54 degrees north, which is 60% of uh, the way from the equator to the pole. Uh, it's the position it's in. Um, the winter solstice sunrise is 45 degrees from due south. Uh, and the major lunar sun, the major lunar moonrise is thirty degrees from due south. Major lunar standstill. Yeah, standstill. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to be in a specific position or 
for that to occur now obviously over you know a few miles each way maybe 50 60 miles each way um you'd still see that so and it picked up on uh, one of the things that someone was saying they were following it until we got to comets <laughs> natural disasters well if you put off by that i apologize and i would never have got into it if we'd not have seen the uh, 9600 bc days uh, for aldebaran uh, so the design has actually led me into that but if you also remember we talked about the talmud in episode one and how it said that there are about 100 stars in the pleiades star cluster well, it does say some other stuff as well. Now, I didn't know this, but uh, I had it pointed out to me. So we learned through tradi tradition that a comet does not pass the Orion constellation. And if it does pass Orion, the world will be destroyed. Oh. Hmm. So this was going on in a more or less like an interview between two or three people. <clears throat> So one of the other people was saying, it is merely, it is, it is merely that Violon, one of the firmaments, rips and hurls the light of the next uh, of the next firmament, uh, and this appears like a comet. So you could imagine that a major solar flare. How would that look? You know. Yeah. It, um, Hmm. Could you imagine that it was, you know, the uh, universe is coming together and that sort of thing anyway. So I thought that might be a reference to a, um, a solar flare. When the Holy One, blessed be he, sought to bring the flood into the world, he took two stars from Pleiades and brought the flood upon the world. And afterwards, when he wished to fill the void, he took two stars from Ursa Major and filled the void with them. Now, Ursa Major is the great bear, uh, and there are several legends of uh, stars moving from the great bear to towards the Pleiades. Uh, and we'll see at least another one of those as we go through this. Uh, but... That sounds as though two objects have come from somewhere near the Pleiades to me. And it goes on to say, does this, this necromancer know what, uh, what, what is this earthquake? The Holy One sheds two tears into the great sea. And the sound of their reverberations is heard from one end of the earth to the other. Wow. Man. So, so that sounds as though it's related to this as well. Necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got to th uh, thank uh, Zach, uh, Zedleet1 in the Discord for drawing my attention to that. Yeah, those are great references. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were. Um, we got quite a discussion going on it, actually, and uh, t Tony got quite excited. <laughs> 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 wow, you got Tony excited? <laughs> that never happens. So you love. He still remember. owes me a dollar, by the way. He said we would never go to the Austin cart ruts, and we did. Ah. <laughs> what are the Austin cart ruts? Uh, they they're they're just. I don't want to distract too much, but they're cart ruts in stone in Austin. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, like the ones that are in Malta and everything. We did yeah, go. Yeah. And like, But when we were talking about it in the Discord, he was like, they're never going to go. This is never going to happen. <laughs> so, Well, I hope we have that on uh, a later episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can talk. We'll talk about it for sure. That's it was really right. interesting. Yeah. So I spent quite a long time last time talking about Howell Hill and trying to convince people that it had something to do with the build of the monuments. Now... It struck me the other day that how is an old nurse word meaning an artificial mound. Mm. So based on that, it was maybe giving away the clue that it is related to it. But also in the local area, we have Howgrave, Sutton Howgrave, 
and Middleton Quern How. Mm. Now, a quern is a stone that's thrown in a game. And we uh-huh. have devils <laughs> throwing <Wow>. stones. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is some example of hows. And they're all over Yorkshire. And quite why I didn't cotton on to this before, I don't know. So wait, how is how you pronounce that? H-A-U-G-R? Yeah. Oh, my H-A-U-G-R. God. H-A-U-G-R, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but come on, they're they're probably saying how, yeah, how, <laughs> <laughs> right? How the, how the hell am I going to survey this from? <laughs> but that's cool. So how hill? Oops. Uh, I'm too far. Actually, how hill though is isn't that a natural hill or is it an artificial? It is a natural hill. Yeah, yeah. Come but on. I think, I, th- I think in these instances, the hows. Uh, uh, local expressions for the uh, um, for the henges. So, do you think any of this stuff could be? I mean, is it like uh, you know this concept of the uh, the navel of the world? Um, I was just mm-hmm. thinking. I was thinking that after we did the last episode, this might be another tangent. But this idea of building a navel and saying, "Here's the center." You know, the world was birthed from this point. And when you start connecting it to impacts and comets and everything, it's the birth of the new world. It could be the birth of the new world. Yeah. It? I mean, if you think that we're not too far from Doggerland here, uh, and that was supposed to have submerged 5,000, 6,000 BC. Mm. Uh, must have swept away most of their culture and yeah. the building these 3000 BC. So, hmm. maybe. Right, so this is from the comments on the last episode by a Wraith Synth. Edmund Bogg in around 1910 gave the circumference at the base of Pudding Pie Hill to measure upwards of 160 yards. And then, I think it's a she, but it might not be, so my apologies if I've misgendered. Um, So she did this calculation, 480 by nine equals 4,320. And she put in a comment after that, well, it would be, wouldn't it? (laughs) (laughs) It would be. (laughs) <laughs> so if you remember, 4,343,200 4, was the number that we spent some time looking at last time. Yeah? Hmm. Uh, Kyle mentioned that he didn't think that was the high, uh, the high 80s. That was so. definitely, I did that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a look at star clusters. So the, these are all the star clusters we can see. And there aren't many of them you can get a V-shape or a U-shape out of. So a lot of them are just random clusters. Uh, so I did test a number of them, including dual box and dual box is too much of a V. Well, uh, I was suggesting the Pleiades. Cause I, because you, you were. You were. Yeah, yeah. But I thought I'd test one or two others. So okay. that's what we're looking for. This is the high 80s, so uh, the yellow of the stars. Uh, and I've just nominally centered it on there. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the Pleiades. So. Mm. Missing I one. Would say, I would say you've got a pretty good eye count. <laughs> yeah, it's not much better than the high 80s. <laughs> 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 now, I'm going to stick with the high 80s just because uh, Alderburn is St. Michael's star. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we decided that, uh, well, we didn't decide, but we were talking about how it's possible that they may have the high 80s in a different configuration. If they used a different star, then you might get that angle on the right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You might. Yeah. And you wouldn't Man. expect artists to be accurate astronomers either. Right, that's the question is, you know, is the art on the card accurate? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. So I, I, I appreciate that bit's a bit off the wall, but yeah. I thought you might uh, might be interested in it. 
Right, so the guys had a whip round for me and bought me this. <laughs> there you so go. Thanks, thanks to Troy. <laughs> so today I want to look at uh, the wider Yorkshire area and demonstrate that this culture is not just confined to Yorkshire. So we'll be looking at wider Yorkshire, and I suspect we won't get all the way through here, but we'll... we'll get a move on and see how far we can get through. Alignments, which are straight lines. We'll look at Arbalone Castle Rig and then the Devil's Links. Uh, these are all sort of the Devil's Links. In the background here, you'll see my sort of database of Devil's uh, Monuments. Uh, we'll come back to that. Hmm. So, well. start with this. So you remember seeing this in episode one when I said it looked as though they had a common culture. There are some differences, however, in that Britain is the land of the Henges. And there are some in Germany, a few in uh, northern Spain. Uh, but predominantly, they're a British thing. I don't know why, but... You'll see as we go on that uh, on the Yorkshire side, I concentrate on engines and stones, really. Uh, and that's why. So, in the wider Yorkshire complex, and these are the ones we've looked at. Well, Thornborough, the Devil's Arrows, Canaban, Hutton Moor and Numbic Henge. In addition to that, uh, we've got a uh, another stone, which is the Rudstone Monolith a hill, which is Claro Hill, and nine henges. So the henges are Maiden's Grave, which I think is probably the most romantically named uh, henge in England. Uh, Paddock Hill, Catterick, Cinderby, Tenlands is not in a lot of the databases, and they're not even sure it was a henge. Uh, but the databases that, it, that I've found it in do have it as a hinge, so I've nominated it as one. Well. It's a very rubbed out crop mark. And then there's a couple on the uh, high Pennines, so uh, one at Castle Dykes. And these are quite important for later things that we're going to look at. And one at Yarnborough, Yarnbury, sorry. Castle Dykes overlooks Wensleydale, which is this dale here. Uh, and uh, Yambry overlooks Wharfdale, which is this dale that goes up here. I love the English names for stuff. Every single one of them makes me start wondering, how did they get that name? <laughs> I'm wondering about history. <laughs> That's yeah, great. There's, <laughs> there's, there's quite a lot of history to this. Some of these, most of them will be Danish names. Uh, from the Vikings, but some of them will be Saxon, and a few of them will still be early British. Hmm. Uh, and I've not picked out which is which. So. <laughs> uh, Newton Kime, uh, which I've only got on for one reason, really, and Ferry Bridge uh, in the south. There's actually a Henge further south, which we will come across. Uh, so that is the entire complex really uh, and i do think that each one of these is related to this central complex and is that whole the sort of flat area in the going down the middle there is that the ancient glacial lake you were talking about yes okay. yeah that's the, the glacial lake it's probably about the most fertile uh, yeah uh, land in england wow uh there's a rolling choke area here. So this round here is choke downland. Up here you've got uh, the area called the Yorkshire Moors. So it's really it's moors. Rough moor, mm. and the Pennines down here. There are quite a lot of monuments up here and down here. Mm. Uh, most of them, though, I think, are of an older date. So uh, the Beaker people and beyond them. Uh. So. I mentioned that we had a hill, so it's called Claro Hill, uh, and it was demolished when the uh, Great North Road, the A1, was uh, widened. 
the only picture I've managed to find of it is this. Um, it's down here, so it's south and a bit east of the Devil's Arrows. Notice the name is interesting. Nineveh? Nineveh. Mm. Mm. Yeah. There are, in Yorkshire, there are quite a few names that appear to be biblical. Uh, and you'll see around um, Rudstone there's an interesting name that comes in as well, which uh, I think will uh, be, well, it will interest some people, that's for sure. So Barrow Hill has gone, so I couldn't locate it accurately on uh, modern maps. So I had to find an old map and then using the field boundaries, uh, approximate its position, but my guess is that position is to within about 100 feet of where it was. Now, Clarrow Hill was an ancient and revered place long before the Vikings. The Vikings had a thing, or thwing on the hill. Now, a thing was the Vikings, uh, they might not have been very nice people, it's people outside of the Viking community, but they were quite democratic, so they'd get together, the whole, the whole group of people, the whole um, community, to make decisions. And it was called a thing. <laughs> Good, isn't it? I don't know why that's hilarious, but it is. <laughs> yeah, are you going to the thing with the guy at the place? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> So, could this be... Uh, Did the Vikings like call it a thing? <laughs> or is that a British word for it? Yeah, no, no, you yeah. know, they're up there doing the thing. <laughs> it's what the Vikings called it. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, they're on the hill doing the thing. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry. Back to the Anyway, incident. I was Sorry. wondering whether this, this hill could be a Yorkshire Silbury Hill. It's appears here much smaller so looking at that picture and comparing it to the house i approximated it to be about 60 foot high uh, now the picture was dated 1902 somebody would claim to measure it in 1900 at 228 feet high mm. now silver hill is only 130 feet high so this could have been a pretty big hill at one point now, I hope to show you later that it was part of the overall design. So, that's... We'll get to it later. Uh, we'll get to it later. <laughs> <laughs> Rootstone monolith. So, uh, this is the largest standing stone in Britain. It's over 25 feet tall and weighs at least 40 tonnes. Uh, it's reputed to be as deep in the ground as it is above. Whether that's true or not. That also looks cut, like shaped. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks as though somebody's it's gone square. to a trouble to yeah. Yeah, square it up. A lot of times a lot of times the standing stones look like, you know, they're very pretty rough. Maybe not yeah. so much cut, but this one is shaped. Yeah. Interesting. Is that section on the top? Uh, uh that was added later because it had some some of these grooves in it that uh, I thought it into a road away. So some lady in the 18th century, I think it was, made a lead cap for it. Wow. <laughs> so, so the grooves. Uh, Rudstone is 44 miles east of the Devil's Arrows, uh, and uh, the stone sits next to a church, as you can see. Is it possible that it was shaped by later people as well? I mean, there's probably no way to find out. Well, I, about, I, I was going to say we, we the discussion we had in episode one about the Devil's Arrows grooves being having been yeah. eroded after the stones were stood up. I mean, this seems to suggest that that's the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the lady was concerned about work that had been previously done. Yeah, equally possible, isn't it? Hmm. So, Rudstone is a very ancient site and was probably used for religious purposes long before the building of the church. Uh, and 
I found this quote. So the site was once a great Neolithic centre which stretched for miles. Uh, and just, I've just cut this out. So he's talking about some comments that he had, someone else was talking about. So he adds that the Brigantes are the people of Brig, who were the people here when the Romans arrived, uh, worship their great goddess from before Neolithic times. So really goes back a long way before the church. So what is the, what is the meaning of the term Brig? What is that people uh, of the I Brig? Th I don't know. Mm. I'll look it up. Yeah. So, Rudstone Monolith is in there, he called the Newton World Triangle. I'll just mention a bit about this because there's all sorts of interesting things there. So, remember I was talking about uh, rolling choke lands. So, this gives you a, a rough idea. It's very green and verdant and very steep valleys. This is David Hockney, by the way. You've probably heard of David Hockney. Um, and... Fold upon fold of encircling hills, piled rich and golden. And mm. um, so it's quite a nice place. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. So this is Newton World Triangle. What's a world? Uh, the world is so. If you imagine these rolling hills, uh -huh. the world is the the hill. Oh, uh, okay. So I mean, um, it looks like Brig is a two-masted. Square rigged vessel, like a ship. Yeah, but it but can't, I, can't be in that context, can it? Yeah. So the people of the brig you know, might be a region. I don't know. Who knows? I shall have to look it up <laughs> if uh, if Carl can't find it. So there's a few interesting things there. The gypsy race and um, rivers in choke lands tend to vanish when it gets dry uh, and the gypsy race which runs down here uh, has a reputation that when it vanishes it presages disaster uh. so in the english civil war of 1180 it vanished vanished at the black death uh, vanished just before the napoleonic wars and before the first world war wow um and I'm sure most of that's made up. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a good story. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was going to say, can we just watch this river and I'll know when to start prepping? Exactly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, drunken fairies uh, and a stone chalice. Now, this is the same story as LP mentioned on his fairy yeah. thing. Uh, so... This guy was walking past uh, a mound in the fields um, and he heard uh, giggling and drunken merriment. And there was a door in the uh, in the side of the mound, so he went and had a look. So this is my interpretation of it. Uh, and there were a group of fairies inside, absolutely ratted. <laughs> Rat ratted? Uh, ratted? Drunk? Yeah. Drunk, okay. Drunk. I got it. <laughs> It's a Yorkshire expression for drunk. I have to add that one to my... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they offered him a drink, so he took the uh, chalice. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't take a drink because he'd probably vanish and we wouldn't have heard the story. He poured it away and he ran away with it. Uh, and it's reputed to have finished up in the um, uh, with the King of Scotland. So maybe somewhere in Edinburgh Castle, there's uh, an old chalice that the fairies once had. Mm. <laughs> Not convinced, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I can buy it. I do remember this uh, from the tales of the little people, like stealing one of their cups or yeah. something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I think it's a good story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's one of the last places in England where... Um, if you brought in a wolf's head, you got a reward for it. Uh, and that was lasted until about 200 years ago. Uh, and they're reputed to have been werewolves there. So they went round and dug up graves and converted people into wolves. Uh, and a big old dog 
uh, or huge thing hound uh, who sounds a bit like the Hound of the Baskervilles. Mm. So you can imagine if you've ever read uh, uh, that particular book, yeah, you can imagine this huge slavering monster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the original zombie stories were written by a monk who lived somewhere near there, so Revenants and the Living Dead. Uh, so he wrote quite a lot of stories in the 1180s about these sort of things. Uh, dragons. So the story is that there was a dragon that tormented the people around this area, oh, around this area, sorry, mm. um, and chased, chased the young women and... Uh, don't, not quite sure why dragons would chase young women, but <laughs> the story says they did. <laughs> and you would have heard of parking, but it's a sort of oat cake made with uh, a syrupy sugar, and it's really sticky. Hmm. Uh, so stick your teeth together. So the tale is that uh, the dragon was given this parking, stuck its teeth together, so the people got together and threw, uh, threw him off the cliffs and... Uh, uh, and that produced this sort of headland here called yeah. Fowley Brick. And then the last one, so they had a meteorite fall in uh, 1795, which is interesting in itself because it fell in the fields near a village called Thwing. Ah, so, uh, a Viking thing <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, most of the world scientists believed meteorites were rocks fired into the air from volcanoes. As exploding volcanoes were in short supply between Dr Drifield and Bridlington, an urgent rethink was necessary. Oh, I think this was in, was this in Fort's book? Yeah, yeah. Book of the Damned. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. So no one believed in objects falling from the sky, but, and apparently this was a thing that made them change their mind. Ah. So. Well, are you ready, for a, you ready for a break? Yeah. All right. It's Let's... convenient place for a break yeah all right we'll take our first break and be right back with martin green back ladies and gentlemen brothers of the serpent podcast with uh, part three of the megalithic star maps all right man i'm ready give me more <laughs> <laughs> so we'd just gone to rudstone which if you remember was the largest stone in uh, in britain and just a little bit about the area so this, this is the Vanishing River, uh, and round here you can see that there are groups of barrows. And, uh, and up here there's a henge. There's also another henge over here, which is just off the edge of the map. Uh, these lines here uh, are surfaces, which, if you remember, we discussed last week, uh, and yep. what they are, uh, long enclosed um, areas of land, really. So it's like a wall on both sides and whatever happens in the middle. And no one knows what happens in the middle. <laughs> uh, so the stone itself, uh, tradition says, and this is quite a common story you'll be beginning to uh, believe, says the devil threw the stone to destroy the church and he missed it. Uh, <laughs> I guess if you're ever in a situation where the devil's throwing things around you, stay where you are, the chances are he's going to miss. <laughs> uh, local tradition says it fell from the clouds, killing and burying certain desecrators of the churchyard. Now, I've got this thing about church names since, since we found the St. Michael thing. Uh, and it seems that around a lot of uh, these devil sites, 
Uh, the local church is either um, a, a St. Michael church, a St. Michael and All Saints, or an All Saints church. Huh. Um, could be all, all Angels as well, but this one's an All Saints. So the no door to the north of the church is known as the Devil's Door, which I thought when I found it was really interesting. That but is... turns out that in the north of England, the north side of the church was always called the Devil's Side. Uh, and it's thought because it was shaded. Uh, it's shaded in the dark. There. Mm. Yeah, so if you got buried there, you know, you're in the shade. Well, the devil's door only goes one way in a church. <laughs> Out. <laughs> Stone itself is known as the grandmother of the church. Hmm. So you remember I'm talking about this being a very ancient site. That's cool. And that would tend to indicate it so as well. Uh, there's a recent theory that the, some of the marks on the... Uh, uh, on the stone itself might be dinosaur footprints, what? which I found a bit difficult to credit. But a nearby hill is called Baal Hill. Uh. Now, Baal was the god, well, a god in the uh, in the Bible, but also of the Phoenicians. Uh, and there are tales that the tin trade in, uh, in Cornwall and Wales uh, that was supposedly started by the the Romans. There are tales that the Phoenicians were running it many, many years before the Romans. I mean, the Phoenicians turned into the Carthaginians, and the Carthaginians were destroyed well before the Romans came to Britain. Uh, so having a Baal Hill there is quite interesting and fits in with my ideas that the Egyptians might have been there at some point. Mm. Um, there's, I also found a Baal stone further, uh, further south in Norfolk, so I'm sure there are quite a few of these around. Uh, as I said, there are four caircesses and two henges. Uh, and I found this, which is interesting. Remember, we're talking about dowsing at the Devil's yeah. Arrow. The stone dowses well with powerful energy lines, one of which runs through the side of one of the yew trees there. There is also a power spot, so we talked about power spots as well, inside the church, which can be felt quite easily if one walks across the uh, aisle in bare feet. And hmm. remember that uh, Shannon got an electric shock from the one uh, near the uh, Northern Devil's Arrows. Hmm. So... Well, what is that? What is the stone we were looking at on the lower left there? Uh, oh, sorry, that's just a, a pretty stone from the uh, inside the church. And I guess that's late medieval. Yeah. You know, right. it's it's like 1200 or something like that. Templar crosses on there. Yeah. And, and just, hinges. Just thought, yeah. Just thought it was an interesting picture to fill a spot. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the area. So these are the cursuses. That's the monolith. Uh, there's a barrow there and Willie Howe up there, which is where the fairies were. Uh, and then these two henges, which you'll see have some significance. And Keelan Long Barrow and Rudson Long Barrow also have some significance as we go on. Um, the cursuses have been uh, radiocarbon dating, if you believe the results of that, uh, from the second half of the fourth millennium, so 3,000 to 3,500, which is exactly where you'd expect them to be, I think. Now, the rootstone monolith is exactly east of the north stone of the Devil's Arrows. It's six feet out. So if you drew a line from the North Stone eastwards, it'd be six feet away from uh, hmm. the Ridge Stone model. So that means, like the Devil's Arrows, it's 60% of the angular distance from the equator, it's 10% of the circumference from the North Pole, and it's got these interesting um, alignments to the solstice and the major lunar standstill. This is the line, and there are a number of monuments not very far off the line. I've put the distances in there. Um, 
two that I mentioned, Rudson, Long Barrow, and uh, Ke Ke is it Keelum? Keelum, Long Barrow are down there. So yeah, I can't read. It. I can't. Yeah, no, it's difficult to read, but you can see roughly where they are. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We'll come back to those. So when I first found out about this directly uh, east, uh, I thought that the builders would have done it on the centre of the Devil's Arrows. I now think differently, by the way. But if it was on the centre, the arrow would be 200 feet in four, 44 miles, which nothing, really. So I think it's an equinoctial mark of the Oaks complex. So absolutely spot on due east so on the uh, equinox the sun would rise on that line and I'll do, just do you mean the, that they would that this would have been included in their surveying of the entire site because you can't you so. can't possibly see this stone from no you can't right. see it but we'll see others later on that are on an interesting alignments that yeah. you can't possibly see okay in fact, some of them are hundreds of miles away. So the stone is, like we were talking about before, it looks like it's been squared or cut. Is it possible yeah. that it, it's, is it cardinally aligned, its faces, or? No, that's a good question. Because the I church, I mean, it definitely is yeah. off alignment with the church itself. Uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Let me just make a note of that. So if the church is cardinally aligned then the stone is off but then that would be interesting to see what it is pointing at if yeah. anything yes i will have a look all right uh, part but four if it was <laughs> if it was uh carved later yeah into a square sort of design like it is now maybe yeah. hmm, i'm not sh not sure you'd want to carve a stone that was already up there would you yeah. I don't know. It should mean, be easy enough sure. to find out. I mean, well, I mean, if they're connected to. Martin, you just need to get a soup spoon and go down there, <laughs> dig down a little bit, and see if the <laughs> stone gets wider. Well, then he's going to be one of the desecrators of the churchyard, and then he's going to get <laughs> another right. stone thrown yeah. at him. <laughs> It'll be two stones. Yeah, yeah. then they'll, be, they'll, they'll call it the Martin Stone. <laughs> So that, that just was don't looking. just don't move, and you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll get missed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was looking east. If we look west, there's a henge called Yambra, right? Yambra Henge. Uh, it's twenty three and a half miles west of the Devil's Arrows. It's not much more than you can see. It's not much more than the crop mark. And if we draw a line from there, and this is, I think this is a significant line, uh, to Rudstone, you get something like that. It goes about a thousand feet south of the Devil's Arrows, and I think there's a reason for that. And uh, it's closer to all of these monuments, apart from one than uh, the line from the Devil's Arrows was. So is this a possible ley line? Is that what we're looking at? Um, I don't know whether you call them ley line. Yeah, it's a possible ley line. Like a, a line but, that goes through points of power and hinges. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 Uh, one thing that I didn't mention is that um, Rudstone is supposed to have five ley lines going to it, I think. Wow. So... It's well, Mark, you need to get you need to get your dowsing rods out I do, and start down there, yeah. start at the <laughs> at the Rudstone and walk forty four miles <laughs> west, following the ley line. <laughs> Could maybe do it on a map. <laughs> yeah, that'd be easy. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, why does this line go? Uh, a thousand feet south of the Devil's Arrows, and the answer is it is something to do with the equinox sunset. So, if I draw a line from the Devil's Arrows to this point, uh, the Devil's Arrows is on this end, and the uh, the hinge is on this end. The line of sight takes you to this point here. 
Uh, so the angle to Yambri is 26, 268.7 degrees. Uh, that observable high point um, is 250 metres high, which gives an angle of 0.8 degrees. So because of the local hills, the equinox sunset, uh, which... Oh. Yeah, would just hit that angle of the wow. hill. Uh, and this shows you it. So 268.7, and the sun is at just less than one degree. Uh, diameter of the sun is half a... Um, half a degree so it'd just be standing on that hill that's cool now i've not found a marker there but you know could have been moved anything could have happened to it so yamber hinge is also an equinoctial marker uh, and as we saw with uh the redstone monument these markers don't have to be visible from the observing site. In some cases they are, in some cases if you light a fire there it would be vi visible, but that doesn't apply in these two cases. And there are more cases like this. So, now things get a little bit strange here. You'll know about Hugh Newman of course. Yep. Now, he claims that he's found evidence that he, the ancients used a measurement that was the size of a metre. And if they were going to use a measurement related to the Earth's uh, circumference, um, a metre size would be logical because it's just a bit more than a yard. And a yard, I think, is what happens if you put your arms out. Um, so... If they had a, a foot in a yard, and a metre would be a logical measurement. Now, the distance from Yambra Henge to Rudstone is 108 kilometres. Uh, relative sizes of the sun, moon, and their distance from the Earth are related by a factor of 108, or roughly there. And 108 is also one and a half degrees of precession. So if we look at this, so you can get 108 Earths in the, in the sun, 108 suns in the distance between the sun and the air, 108 moons between, and so on. Um, wow. If you were, I, I didn't know uh, that. It's not dead accurate, but it's somewhere near. Moon's radius is 108. Huh? So 108 has some significance. Now, the di distance from the Devil's Arrows to Rudstone is 70.74 kilometres. One degree of precession, as we calculate it, is 71.66 years. But if the... Um, if I calculated a great year based on 70.74 uh, years, it come out at 25,466 years. Now, in the Indian texts, they had the great year as 25,461. So, yeah, hmm. that's much closer. So, five years out. <laughs> wow. So, I'm not saying this is right or this is wrong. Uh, and the scale I'm going to show you in a minute, I reckon it's about a 2 on. So zero is, I'm um, pretty confident of it. Uh, five is, you've got to take your chances with it. Mm. Two ain't bad. Okay. So, could the site have been built to reference the relative size of the sun and moon and the rate of precession? It's possible, isn't it? Yeah. Right, go on to alignments then. There we go. So the first thing that everyone will have heard of, of, of alignments are ley lines and such like, which became very popular in the 60s and 70s. Uh, but based on a work by uh, by this chap, uh, Alfred um, Watkins, who wrote two books, the most famous one, The Old Strike Track, 
in 1925, but he did write an early one. Uh, he wasn't the first, though, so in 1846, uh, the idea was put forward by Edward Duke, and in 1909, to somebody in Germany that proposed it as an idea. So, where we talk about a ley line as being an energy line, he had a different view of it. So it's mounds, moats, beacons, marker stones uh, fall into a, a strike track. Uh, so they were sighted lines throughout Britain, and there's some evidence of trackways on these alignments. So my definition then is three or more monuments on a straight line is the first one, which is fits exactly with Alfred Watkins. Um, a line that points to celestial events, so uh, solstice, uh, the major moon, lunar standstill, <coughs> and so on. Uh, and then I've added another one, two or more monuments on the same line of latitude or longitude. And we've already seen one of those in the Devil's Arrows to Rudstone. So my definition of it, it needs to be accurate. And by accurate, I mean the error from the line shouldn't be more than about three quarters of a percent of the total line lengths. Uh, now, many people have argued that one doesn't exist. It's just a, a random collection of, you know, you can throw straight lines through pizza, pizza shops in the local town if you want to. Right, that there's so many monuments and monoliths there that you can make straight lines through That's any right, of them yeah. and they're just random. Now, there, is some, there is some truth in that. So these are my devil's monuments uh, in uh, the Midlands and south of England. And this is uh, a sort of test bed that I set up to try and mimic this, but with points in a different place. So I spent a couple of hours one day trying to draw straight lines between the devil's monuments. Wow. You need to make this into a map on your wall with string. <laughs> so I, got, I got that. Uh, and that induced me to do this because I thought, oh, this is great. This is amazing. <laughs> now, <laughs> once I'd done that, though, I did that. <laughs> and statistically, there's no difference between these two. The only real difference is on this one, there's one with four. There isn't on this one. So, so this one on the right, on this one on the right is just a random distribution of dots. That's a random distribution of dots. Took me ages to do it actually because I wanted something that roughly reflected this. So I mean, you didn't want them all in the same place or anything. Yeah. Uh, and doing that on a map is not easy. I had to divide it up into squares and then see how many points there were in the, uh, I think it was a 10 kilometre square or something like that. And okay. then let Excel work it out for me. Um, but. Wait, you had Excel work out where the points went? Yes. Using a ra okay, that's cool, man. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Just using random in, within the square, so it worked out a latitude and a longitude, and I loaded it into Google Earth. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> so I think that if you are, if you do draw lines between points, you need more than just the lines. You either need a really long line that is absolutely convincing. Oh, you need something in common with the monuments. So, for instance, the hinges, there aren't that many hinges. So, finding a straight line amongst a dozen hinges uh, could point to the being line, an alignment there. So, I don't know whether you remember these pictures we started off with in the very early days that some archaeologists did, so... He drew yeah. a line from the Devil's Arrows through Canaban and Hutton Moor, and you can see even on his picture that the accuracy isn't great. Um, so the line is just short of five miles long, and if you drew it on Google Earth, you can see he's not got Tenlands Henge on here, but I've drawn it straight to Hutton Moor. You can see that's quite a big error there. Uh, I can actually... Um, extend that line up to Catterick Henge. It's not 
quite the same line, slightly different angle. But once again, I'm getting errors here, here and here. So you can see that the errors there. So they're more than 0.75 of the line length. But if I look at this one where I've got the devil's arrows, Thornborough henges and Nunwick henge. So this is the main alignment we talked a lot about last time. It's 10.4 miles long. The error at Nunwick henge is 20 feet and it's actually really too small to measure. So it's 0 0.04 of the line length. So Nunwick henge is almost certainly sitting on that line for a reason. Uh, and there's further proof of that in the last episode, which I guess we won't get around to until about May now. But <laughs> <laughs> um, So that's what I would call the line. And then one or two do pop out at you. So remember we saw these two henges near Redstone. And there's ten lens henge there in a dead straight line. The error at um, the middle one, which is Paddock Hill, is 92 feet. So virtually nothing. Don't, and did don't you, mean it's did you don't say mean it's deliberate? But right, you yes. said ten lens, ten lens hinge is almost invisible as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But there is definitely something there. Yeah, I mean, if, you're, if you think that all of this is really prime farmland and has been ploughed for 5,000 years, it's amazing we can yeah, find anything. Right. And you mentioned crop circles. Do ac do crop circles actually appear in the croplands out here? Uh, we don't get many. Most of them are in um, Wiltshire and around that area. Okay. Some because that would be crazy if crop circles were also appearing on the lines. Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've given me another rabbit. Huh? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we've seen this one before. So that's the devil's arrows across to, um, and I appreciate that the pictures could be a lot bigger. <laughs> Sadly, they're not. Uh, across the roadstone and the monuments on the way. Uh, so the question is, is this closeness deliberate or not? Now, these are all the other monuments around uh, between those two areas and around. And if you try and draw a straight line through any of these, that's about the best line you're going to get. I've tried it, and it is the best line that you're going to get. Wow, so, you, you've tried drawing straight lines through all of that stuff? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like your dedication, man. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the uh, monuments on the way, uh, and these are the errors. So you can see Head and Howe is a bit, by my definition, is a bit too far off. But we'll see uh, something else about Head and Howe shortly. In fact, about a, a similar line to that. So, so that might not be the story for that. But if I draw a line from that line that we've already seen from the Amber Henge, uh, just south of the Devil's Arrows, and then up there, uh, it goes a thousand feet by the Devil's Arrows. Uh, it's fairly close to the other monuments. So here you see the error on this line down that column and the error on the Devil's Arrows line in this column. And you'll see in just about every case it's more accurate on the uh, line from the Armbra. And now the percentages all look pretty good. So I've got uh, two, four, six, six monuments on that line and they're all within the percentage error. So I think that is a genuine line. What's the second arrow call error column telling us? I'm sorry. The, the, that's sorry. the devil's arrows line. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, so, so we're comparing two lines, one from the devil's arrows. I got to... lost there. Okay. So yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the, the error for this line is the uh, first column. Okay. Yeah, all yes, right. I yeah. got it. Yeah. It is more accurate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, 
part of the accuracy comes from the line being longer, I guess. But yeah. But he, but uh, even so, we've uh, included another monument. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just do another couple of these because uh, this this one is interesting, actually. So. Remember, we tried to draw a line from the Devil's Arrows down here up to Hutton Moor, and it missed both of these uh, and left quite a big error. Well, if I go up to Canna Barn, which is Alder Barn, uh, and draw a line to Catrick Henge, it really does go straight through Hutton Moor Henge. You can see the crop mark there. Oh, yeah. So oh. the error on that is absolutely zero. <laughs> now the Marty scale. <laughs> <laughs> so when i post things that are relatively genuine i don't need you know i'm convinced about i don't need to tell people that they might they might need to think about it is that what the numbers but, are it's how many whiskeys you have to have to believe it is that what yes. you're about to try? <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering why you started with zero as the best okay <laughs> now i get it Five whiskeys to start believing it is uh, so not very this, good. This, this is modified from an old boss of mine who used to come in looking very groggy some mornings <laughs> saying, I've got a new design. Can you have a look through it? That's a half bottle of whiskey one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if it's a one or two it's not bad but if it's five or six <laughs> you need to think about it so the, the next one i'm going to show you is probably about a two and a half so if i extend this line from catrit uh, down down to uh, canabar it just about hits notre dame so the error at Notre Dame is 3,670 feet, which is 0.17 of the line. You can see it goes through uh, the gardens at the Jardin de Luxembourg. Um, and I just thought that was, wow. that was interesting. Not only that, it does pass through several other monuments. One of them is called the Devil Stone in Kent, and the error is 3,000 feet. So another devil's point there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, dolmen down here. And down here there's several monuments. But I can't... The trouble is I don't like including them on alignments if I haven't got a reason for doing it. So, you know, it might be genuinely that they wanted a holy well on an alignment. Yeah. Uh, but... I can't see the similarity between the other monuments and their fire rule it out. Which I think is the safest thing to do. Um, I wanted to mention this one because I said that uh, I've mentioned Claro Hill. I remember that uh, small hill that turned into a big hill just after the Devil's Arrows. Yeah. Uh, which I thought might be a similar monument silver hill well this hinge down here <coughs> this this one was the furthest south one we've seen so far so this is a bit further south if i draw a line up there to the devil's arrows uh it's 42 miles long the error at ferry bridge is 900 feet and that's 0.4 percent the error at claro hill is 130 feet mm. so it goes bang through the middle of it effectively. So I think that's strong evidence that whoever designed all this designed that in. Hmm. All right, we're already at another break. Bad end. Are we? Yeah. Let me just let me just do this one before right. we move on. Yeah. So Cinder bit Cinder in <laughs> Newton Kime, it's just a straight line there at uh, the Devil's Arrows is 0.29%. And that's a summary of that section. Wow. So those are the ones we've looked at. All right. Thanks, man. That's a, right. It seems like a lot of work to check all this. That's oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you're retired, you can afford the <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Awesome. Retired and have plenty of whiskey, you can... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> there's times when I'm enthusiastic and times when I almost feel repelled by it. Yeah. It's like something pushing me away. Um, and I'm going through one of those phases at the moment. Oh, actually. being pushed away from it? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but there's been plenty of times when I've thought, well, I've got everything that's possible out of this. And then you find something else and, you know. You yeah, that's keep cool. Going. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll take a break and be right back with, with more. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, Brothers of the Serpent podcast, as above, so below. And Martin has been showing us possible alignments, maybe ley lines, but more likely just, just like seems like survey lines, really, between these sites um, that he's been looking at and uh, statistical probability of them being accurate based on the length of the line and the distance off of the line that they are. Uh, I love this kind of stuff, Martin, so thank you. Um, Good. Appreciate we, the work. Yeah. Are we done with that part? Are we moving on to something else? Uh, yeah, that's the end of that bit. Well, the next bit is broadening out this. Uh, so this was the these these were all the alignments we've seen. Uh, so what I want to look at now, if I can, stuck in this problem of not being I just, there. there we go. I have one more thing to say about this. I I love the. Uh, you know, look at all the pizza restaurants and see if you can make lines. <laughs> yes. I think that there should be a more in-depth study. Can you find, like, geometric principles and mathematical principles in the stools of pizza restaurants yeah. that are all in a straight yeah, line? Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Find say, the ones in a straight line and then see if there's <laughs> geometric and mathematical principles in their stools. Yeah, because yeah. they say the same thing about, no, yeah. just take an average chair or stool. <laughs> yeah. You'll find pi and yeah. freaking fee. That's a great point because it's like those are two different things. Yeah. Yeah. First, they have to be in a line with some accuracy, <laughs> yeah. and then there better be pi and fee yeah. in their yeah. buildings and furniture. On the golden ratio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That needs to be done, Martin. That yeah. can be an addendum to the end of your uh, presentation. It gives you a great excuse to visit a lot of pizza places. <laughs> yeah, you could do it with pubs as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you it's go. Do it. It's be... the statistical difference between pubs and pizza restaurants. <laughs> well, the problem with pubs is you'll be, you'll be believing it all by the end of it because you'll be five whiskeys in. <laughs> oh, man. There's a, there would be a... a a statistical anomaly in there. You're like the fifth pub every time <laughs> seems to m meet all the criteria. <laughs> but I can't read my writing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wider connections. Right. So we're looking at the wider area now. So <clears throat> what we've seen so far uh, it covers an area of 67 miles east to west and 65 miles north to south. And uh, you can see that we've got Thornborough there and a few hinges and some stones. <coughs> right, our below. Uh, it's one of the premier sites in the north. So it's a hinge with stones and the stones are laid down. No one knows why they're laid down and whether they were ever... Uh, upright in the first place. So it's 66 miles southwest of the Devil's Arrows, so it's down here. This was probably before they realized they had to bury just as much as sticking out. <laughs> yes. Oh, we've got them too sure. Is it possible that somebody went along and knocked them over? It's quite possible. Yeah. No, but no one knows. So you've got a view of it there. Wow. It's just a page of views. So somebody's uh, done a what it would have looked like if it was upright. Um, and I just like some of these pretty pictures. Oh, actually. that's yeah. awesome, man. Wow. This one gives you an idea of the size of the stones. You see there's a guy stood on one. Right? Wow. Okay, yeah. 
And the ditch, man, that's a substantial... That is a substantial ditch. Yeah. Uh, And the embankment's pretty big as well. Yeah. God, this... We've been going through this... uh, uh, the mounds of America with Randall, yeah, on Cosmographia, and it's just stunning how similar the this hinge is. I mean, we have well, basically we have a, a shit ton of hinges here in the United States. Yeah, they just don't call them that. Yeah, that's exactly what they are. It's fascinating. Yeah, no one crossed the Atlantic. <laughs> right. Hmm. <laughs> It's impossible for him to do it. Uh, I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to make any more comments on that. Around the area, it's a really good area, actually. So there's uh, a little stone circle here, which these are quite big stones. So all of these are bigger than me. Uh, called nine stones close. The wear more stones there. There's only four at the moment. <clears throat> and behind uh, nine stones close, uh, there's what is thought to be a natural outcrop uh, called Robin Hood Stride, which you can see in the distance there. So this is some artistic version of it, but that gives you an idea of the distance between them. This is Robin Hood Stride. You notice these rocks here? Wow, yeah. And down here? There. Well, what are you pointing I'm out there? I'm not sure what you're pointing out there. Right, can you see these? Yes. Yeah, almost like cup marks. Oh, I see that one, yeah. Yeah. There's quite a few that look as though they could be... Uh, I do see the vertical the erosion on the one on the left. That's what I was going to say. Right. Left and right, you yeah. have vertical uh, erosion. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so that's a natural... That's Does it... I mean, I guess just because of the precipitation, it whatever is exposed to the surface is going yeah, to get those. It could possibly be natural, but why don't we have the same erosion on the... Because that's, that's newer. It's, it's been, it's, <laughs> in other words, it was covered up by something sitting on top of it more recently yeah. well, than possible. the ones up, t- up high. That one? Same deal. I mean, it would have to be. That there was well, a layer on top of that that tumbled down. And so it's now... possible. But yeah, yeah uh, that, that would be my guess. Mm. Anyway, as a as an outcrop, and this this is quite a, a, a nice area, I think. And why, then near the, why is it called near, Robin Hood's Stride? What does this? What does it mean? Because he he, he stepped the, from one to that, the other. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, yes. Yeah, yeah. It must be. So. He's a giant. <laughs> I mean, there's there's quite a few places called Robin Hood around here. So. Uh, not far from there, probably seven or eight miles. There's Nine Ladies Stone Circle. And this is a beautiful little stone circle. Uh, really peaceful. It's on top of a ridge over the valley. Uh, and you can't see it here, but down here, there's a sort of heel stone, which I think points out the uh, winter solstice sunset. <clears throat> and then in between this one and this one, there's this one in the woods. You've got to go across private land to get to this, but it doesn't seem to stop people. <laughs> <laughs> so you go here and all the uh, all the trees have got things hanging on them, you know, gifts for the uh, for the fairies. Uh, <laughs> so, that's awesome. So I love that. That's great, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to take anyone anywhere, I'd take them to this area because it's, you know, it's just stuff full of stuff. Right, you remember we had yarn breed, devil's arrows, rood stoners, uh, and alignment across there. And is that the dragon's the, the dragon's point out there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yeah, that's the dragon's point there. Okay, yeah. Right. Uh, so we have this alignment. Well, this line from there through Yarnborough, by Yarnborough to Castle Dykes, is 77.7 miles long. Uh, the error at Yambury is uh, less than 100 feet, so that's 0.08% of the main line length. And these are the only hinge monuments in the Pennines, and I'm defining that as between Arbelow and the Scottish border. So I think that's a deliberate line. All right, all right. And not only that, 
I Whoa. can extend this line by adding Sturm Sertels going north <clears throat> all wow. the way up to Orkney. Now I'm 406 miles long. I've added six Sturm Sertels and one Sturm Row and a standing stone. <clears throat> these are the sites and these are the uh, dif distances off and the percent. Now there is a small problem there because I'm running through quite a busy area if I go north of uh, uh, the Ambra, which is, sorry, Castle Dykes, which is there. So this is quite a busy area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I guess the question would be, if these are in lines, what are all the other sites? Like, why aren't they in lines? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, there's there's that. There's two questions, actually. Can I get a better line is the first. Yeah. Uh, so I've taken that line at that point and I've moved it half a degree of time across here to see whether I could get a better line, and I can't. Uh, and then the other thing is, why have they done that? Not something else with all of these. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... Well, okay. So one thing that occurs to me is that if, if any of these two, any two of these sites that are close to each other or directly adjacent to each other um, are visible from one another, I, I don't know if that's part of the case. It's, it's, it just seems like like for example, <clears throat> if you if you wanted to make a a sight line for something, like you showed earlier, how the the changing in elevation, yeah, so you could follow them along. Yeah, yeah, you could follow yeah. them along, but also the changing in elevation. If you're looking at the at a star or a, something rising or setting, that could account for some of the deviation in straightness because from one to the next, like there's a higher ridge, so you have to kind of shift yeah, the yeah. degrees to be able to see, like if it's sighting something in the distance. I don't know, but if they're not visible from one to the next, then I have no idea what. Yeah, I the mean, some of these be. distances between them, these are in feet. So oh, yeah, they're just. Big. I mean, yeah, even the shortest one is thirty-three thousand feet. Yeah, yeah, which is what six miles. Yep. <clears throat> and this this line doesn't seem to point to anything in the sky either. And I couldn't mm. find anything. So, is it right? I don't know. <clears throat> now, while we're at our below, you may have uh, heard that it's due, due north of Stonehenge, but rather sadly it's not. It's not far off, but it's not. <clears throat> but while we're in Wiltshire, Great Pyramid has an exterior angle of 5151, which is the same as the latitude of Silbury Hill. Silbury Hill has an exterior angle of 30 degrees, which is the same as the latitude of the Giza complex. <clears throat> the main axis between Thornborough and the Devil Arrows, if I measure it from east, remember, it was 141 degrees. It's 5112 from east. And it looks to me as though these people did measure from east rather than north. So, hmm. Hmm. interesting collection of numbers. <clears throat> right, Castle Reef which is up here, is another of Britain's premier sites. Some pretty pictures of it. It's set in the uh, uh, the English Lake District, so you've got all these mountains in the distance. Not mountains by American standards, but they are by <laughs> British. So, can be quite pretty up there. Surrounding area, there's not many what? monuments. What? Look at that thing. There's <laughs> this huge erratic. <laughs> so it's called the Bowder Stern. Uh, it's supposed to be 2,000 tons. It's 30 foot high and a circumference of 90 feet. So that'll be a fairly big piece of ice to carry that thing. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, it's named after the son of the Norse god Odin. Now, Castle Dykes, Castle Reed, Devil's Arrows, all in a line. 
Oh. Whether the castle bit is significant, I don't know. <clears throat> now, the distance is one of those funny ones where uh, it's almost a round number of feet and kilometres. So uh, it's 53 feet off 77 uh, miles and uh, 64 metres off 124 kilometres. So pretty round numbers, really. And Castle Dykes is uh, 1,400 feet from the main line, which is now 0.35. Isn't 1440, 1440 yeah. the number of seconds in a, in a day, 12-hour day, or what is it? Or what is it? Let me see. The number of minutes? Yeah, minutes. Seconds. It's something, isn't it? Um, what is that? No, I forgot. <laughs> it is that significant. Angle, that angle there from the Devil's Arrows, it's 298 degrees and it's a minor lunar standstill. Uh, uh. So but again, all of this, all, all of these things might be coincidence, but how many coincidences do you want? So all the devil's works. <clears throat> so let's start off with the devil and the Pleiades to begin with. So the devil's arrows represent Pleiades, otherwise known as the Seven Sisters. Um, you've got the uh, Devil's Tower in America, um, and. It's part of the Lakota uh, creation state story of the Pleiades. So the story is that a group of uh, Lakota girls were near this uh, great tower and pursued by a great bear. Uh -huh. Now, remember we talked about things going from the great bear to, uh, to the Pleiades before. Yeah. So... <laughs> they fled for safety and the ground rose around them and they eventually ascended to become the Pleiades. Uh, and these lines are supposedly uh, bare, tearing the rocks. And I think it's a pretty picture as well. So was there an ancient association between the devil and the Pleiades? Who knows? Uh, and once again, we might be back in the territory of comets. So, as I said earlier on, there's not many mention of comics, but this is one of them. Uh, if I go back to Yorkshire, the Devil's Arrows, there's a Devil's Stone down here uh, and uh, a Devil's Cross Hill. Uh, quite often in early Christian societies, they would put a cross on top of uh, a lot of these mounds and um, houses and tumulises and such like uh, and there are a few still in existence on the Yorkshire Moors so there's one called Lilla Cross which has got a cross on top of that uh, well there's a small stone row there and it's a how as well so the Devil Stone is an ancient stone in Cockgrave Church and Devil's Cross Hill is a long barrow this is the Devil's Stone, so this is the one in the church, and it's relatively difficult to see. It says it's Romano-British, and of course no one really knows, and it should probably be British Romano. It's my political view of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, I suspect there weren't many Romans in Roman Britain, but there'd be an awful lot of Brits. <laughs> So it's possible it, uh, it has a head in its hand, so down here. Um, and it's carrying this thing here, which is either an axe or a toe cross. It's possibly a Shielagig, uh, uh, which was the Celtic goddess of creation and destruction, and typically shown as a naked woman displaying an exaggerated vulva. <coughs> Hmm. Now, the line out there from the Devil's Arrows could mark the uh, uh, the sudden minor lunar standstill uh, from the Devil's Arrows. 
think the stone itself has been moved several times, but most of it locally around that church area. Now, I think the church, yes, it is. The church is um, St. Michael's and Holy Angels. Mm. So going back to my thoughts about churches, I'm trying to get a, 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 well, I don't think I'll ever get a full list of British churches. But I'm trying to get a one that's big enough to do some statistical work on. Uh, and it's proving difficult. <laughs> so Devil's Cross Hill, which was on the other side, it's a destroyed mound whose location is not exactly known. Um, it contained, like most of them, it's got intrusive burials. Um, so, but there's evidence that of ancient British stuff there as well. This figurine was found somewhere near the site. Maybe something to do with it, may not. But apparently, yeah, I think that looks quite modern. Apparently, it's, uh, it's pretty ancient. Hmm. Or oh, they think it is, anyway. What a strange <clears> pose, <throat> It's too. possibly a marker of the minor lunar standstill moon rise. So both of those could mark the minor lunar's rise and set. But it also on alignment with... Uh, the rise of Sirius at that time, so Sirius rising over that hill. There's Sirius rising um, at 132 degrees, which is the angle. Uh, just clear the local hill. The hill actually isn't visible again from the Devil's Arrows, but that line does mark out the rise of Sirius. I don't know whether there's any significance with that. Hmm. So why the devil's quick, sights? <clears throat> real quick, yeah, you, you were right. 1440 is the number of minutes in a 24-hour period. Was... Uh, and 144 is, uh, it's like 108 plus 36, which is 72. Um, yes. Yeah. Right, it's like those are those are 72 mm -hmm. numbers. So yeah, related so to 72. A 12-hour period, 720 would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. minutes. Mm. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. So we've seen this before. These are the all the devil sites I've found. You'll notice that there does seem to be a difference in distribution down here. A lot of them down here. Mainly below that line. Now that line is quite significant, actually. So in British history, we had the ancient Britons who uh, were here when the Romans came. The Romans have left very little DNA evidence, which is one of the reasons I suggest that there weren't many Romans here. Um, the Saxons then came and they drove the British back uh, into Wales and Devon and Cornwall. And the Picts have always been independent in Scotland. But then the Vikings came uh, and they raided for long enough, but eventually they brought a big army across called, was it the Grand Army, the Great Army, something like that. They landed in took York and then moved down here. Uh, and they spent um, years and years fighting the uh, uh, the Saxons and Alfred the Great, him of the burnt uh, cakes. Have you heard of the burnt cakes? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 so Alfred the Great was uh, uh, managing to hold the, uh, the uh, Vikings and the line that he was fighting along was about the line of the Thames, somewhere around here. And then on New Year's Day, when uh, all the Saxons were uh, having their celebrations for the New Year, the, the Vikings attacked and overran his uh, army totally and drove him out. And he finished up uh, uh, retreating, uh, probably running away, actually, into the Somerset Marshes, uh, which are down here somewhere. Um, and he, uh, it's really wet marshy area would have been then. And <laughs> he sought shelter the people that lived there. Uh, so he was living for a while in this woman's uh, house uh, and she was cooking cakes and had to go out. 
uh, and the tea leaves that he was concentrating on what he was going to do and let the burn, uh, the cakes burn. So when the woman came back, <laughs> he got a right belting round his head. <laughs> Anyway, after that, he um, um, all of this area, the Vikings hadn't moved very far into this area. Uh, he called all his senior people together and got them to assemble somewhere around here, and there was a huge battle in this area uh, that effectively stopped the major Viking attacks, although there were a lot of uh, repeated fighting. Eventually, they, uh, they settled on this line as the uh, line of uh, uh, probably the Dingle Tri Zone, if you like. Mm. Now, the interesting thing, why does that relate to uh, Devil's Sight? So the interesting thing is that the Vikings never had a concept of the devil. So I suspect that the ones we still have up here, including the Devil's Arrows, must have been really deeply... Uh, uh, embedded in people's imagination, and the other the, the other ones uh, were long lost by you know the Vikings just changed names, mm. called them something else. So that's what we've got. So <laughs> I'd reached. Remember, I was talking just before about there are times when I can't do anything. I'm just almost repelled by. It. Yeah. Uh, and then the returns when I think, well, shall I start again? Uh, I haven't got any ideas, you know. Uh, so the three o'clock voices, I was having this ongoing conversation with them. Um, and what shall I do? Go south. <laughs> what shall I do? Because I've gone south and I've not found anything. I've gone right down to South Yorkshire. Can't be anything else. What should I do? Go south. So this happened night after night after night huh. uh, for quite a long while. And eventually I decided to draw a long straight line from the Devil's Arrows right down to the south coast of England. Well, that takes you somewhere near Oxford. Uh, and somewhere near Oxford, there's a site called the Devil's Coit, a place called Whitney. Now, it's one of the most researched sites in the UK, and it's been almost destroyed and rebuilt. Uh, but I think they've rebuilt it as well as they can to what it was. So the Devil's Quay is down here. It's so quite a long way. And a quay, by the way, uh, is a flat stone through, uh, thrown during the game. So we keep coming across stones that have been thrown. <clears throat> now, it's 163 miles, 262 kilometres south of the Devil's Arrows. Um, the red line is due south, so we're 595 feet from due south. Uh, so... Yeah, that's a small error of that far away. Negligible error. Yeah. Uh, and the local church is St. Michael. That <laughs> is cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is one of the quites. So you can see the quite big stones. And there's a, a YouTube video on them if anyone wants to watch. And I'll send you that and you can put All it right. in the note. Yep. <clears throat> now, there are a number of other devil's points, uh, most of them in South Wales. In fact, when I was reading up about this, somebody was writing, every stone's called a coit down here. Ah. <laughs> uh, but there's also one in Cornwall, um, and there's one here which I've never managed to associate with anything. Uh, this is a close-up of the South Wales area, so you can see that they're falling. This is the one in Cornwall, so this is as it looked uh, about 1800, so a typical dolman, really. Uh, but it looks as though there's only the uh, uh, top left now. So these are the ones in Wales. So this is Newton Cromlech. 
So there's a St. Michael's and Earl Ale in General's Church just south of there, Stackpole Farm. There's a St. Michael and Earl St. Angel's Church just south of there. Uh, there's that one there uh, and that one there. These two are quite close together. And So what's a cromlech? What's the term? What's that term mean? I don't know, and it's Welsh, so... Uh. And then no one knows. Okay, got uh, it. Well, I, I might mention it to Pete and see if he has an idea. Okay. Because well, well, <clears throat> Welsh names often mean something, so they mean something in the landscape. So it, okay, you know, it could be could be significant. I've put those in a row because they do flow from northwest to southeast. And then all of these have alternative uh, names. A portal tomb. Oh. A prehistoric uh, monument consisting of a group of megaliths, sometimes arranged in a circle or a concentric circle. Oh, there you are. That's what it is. Then. All right. At Newton. So it's not Welsh at all. <laughs> so there's a tale about these. So the Devil's Quoit uh, is one of the dancing stones of Stackpole. So these are the uh, three ancient standing stones said to meet at Saxon's Ford on the summer solstice eve where they dance and tell down to a tune played by, by the, the devil, devil on his flute uh. before resuming their stations. Man. <clears throat> that's weird. Right, that's the line we've already seen. This green line uh, goes... From the Devil's Quoit in Whitney to the Devil's Quoit in uh, Newton Cromwell. It's 157 miles, it's due west. The air is a little bit longer than I uh, would like, but 6,000 feet, which is 0.72%. That's a three whiskey error, right? <laughs> I think it's only a two. Maybe two whiskey error, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, remember I talked about uh, remote. Uh, monuments on align specific alignments. So this yellow line, Devil's Arrows to the Neville's uh, Coy at Newton Cromlech, is on the winter solstice solstice sunset. Hmm. Which I find quite amazing, actually. Yeah. Now, I've now put in a black line here, which is just underneath the green line. Difficult to see. Uh, but that is um, going from the Devil's Coit Whitney to the Devil's Coit in Pembroke and uh, is the equinox sunset from Whitney when the sun hits the horizon in Whitney. So, wow. Hmm. So this red line uh, is just about due south and goes to the Devil's Quoit in Cornwall. And it's actually two, uh, 0.2 of a degree off. And the pink line uh, marks the sunset on uh, Samhain, which remember we discussed last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Halloween. Yeah, I can imagine that particular surveying job across the water might be tough. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that could be quite difficult. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, 0. 0.2 degrees, because you have to actually, you know, yeah. <laughs> you can't go, you can't walk it, you know, you have to do some you star calculations, make... yeah. Right, to go back to Pembroke, so this is a close-up of it. So this line here, you can see we've got three of these quites on the line, there's one just north there. Um... It's 6.9 miles long. So the area at Stackpole Farm is 25 feet. Uh, this one here is about 600 foot off. So it's not, for some reason or other, they've built it separately. It's not part of this. Uh, so looking southeast down the line, down there, uh, you'd see the sunrise on Samhain. Looking northwest, uh, it may be a man or lunar standstill, and it's very near the sunset on Beltane, which is maybe it's not quite there, but it's somewhere near. And it'd be difficult to have a line that matched them both unless you're in exactly the same 
place at the right place on the earth. The line also goes through um, a hill fort, what they have termed a hill fort anyway, called Marine Court, which is this. Wow. A much better view on Google Earth than you get on the ground. So this is what it's like on the ground. This is what it is on Google Earth. And why do they think that's a fort? I don't know. When I first looked at it, I thought it could be a hinge. But... Um, like a, like I mean, it, it kind of looks like a like what they would just call it a mound here in the in the states. Right? Yeah, it's just it a raised area, a not necessarily. It doesn't have a ditch, yeah. just a mound, yeah. flat topped, uh, constructed. It mm. could be. I yeah. mean, a lot of monuments in Britain have never been properly researched. Uh, so it could be almost anything, really. But anyway, it goes straight through the middle of it. You guys so. are too busy having tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, if I draw a line, this this line due west that goes uh, down down to the Pembroke one, uh, these are the points on the way and these are the errors. Now, interestingly, there's a quartz wood here. So this this is the, um, uh, the one with that funny name that uh, Kyle looked up. For some reason, or other, it's not on here. Cromlech uh, or whatever. Yeah, Cromlech. Yeah. Cromlech. Yeah, uh, but all of these are pretty accurate from the line. Well, how do you say that one that's second from the bottom in that list there? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's twenty bloody head can. <laughs> now, talking to Pete che Cheeseborough, uh, I don't know whether you've heard of uh, the, there's a star map that somebody's uh, uh, proposed in Wales uh, based on the names of local places. Uh, and it's reasonably accurate to the stars. I don't know how accurate because I've not, I've not seen it, but he thinks that might be on that star map. Hmm. Uh, but the dating of that is much later than this. So it'd be about 1400 BC. Here we're talking about 2800-ish. <clears throat> so this was our line from uh, the those three devil's quipes and going through that uh, hill fort down there, a possible hill fort. This is the Devil's Quite, which is just off this line, and that is an exact north-south line. Well, it is break time. Way past it, actually. <laughs> Should right. we, uh, we take another? Stop. Yeah, we take another break. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I'll just say, I was just giving you guys crap for not doing research on your own sites in England because you're drinking tea but we have so many mounds here no one knows anything yeah. about them so yeah, yeah. yeah that's true <laughs> alright we will be right back Final segment, ladies and gentlemen, going long, I think. Yep. And uh, started the sands of time for no reason. <laughs> Ready to go? Ready yeah. to go. Tell us about the devil. So, we'd just been through, this was the line coming across from uh, near Oxford, the long line, and this was the short line in Pembroke, and this was the due north line from uh, Quoitswood in Stackpole Farm, which is where the dancing stones were. So. Now, we've already mentioned this uh, place in Cornwall, uh, and we, if you remember, we had uh, a straight line north-south which was 0.2 degrees off, uh, off June north. 
or due south, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, but we can also draw that, uh, so we can also draw it up to Quoit's Wood. So this is a slightly different line from the previous one. The previous one came down to ooh, about there. Um, so it's very slightly less accurate, but at Stackpole Farm, uh, the error of this north-south line, if I draw that north-south line, there it goes, up to Quoit's Wood, uh, is 90 feet, which is two seconds of arc, which once again, you know, I mean, over that water is negligible. Uh, so we've got, before we go on, so we've got quite a complex arrangement tying all these devil's points together. So that's 80, what did that say, 86 miles across that water? That's how long that line is there? Yeah, 86.3 wow. foam. Okay, yeah, that's a long line. Right, so, um, I think this might shock you, it shocked me. So I've added two two other lines here, one uh, in light blue from Thornborough down to the Devil's Quite in Cornwall, and one in dark blue uh, from the Devil's Arrows there. Uh, they are both, from the respective sites up here, major lunar standstills. Wow. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that How is does amazing. that work? Yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> We're now into three glasses of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rudstone, Devil's Quite in Whitney, extend that line, and it hits Karna. And I am, so this is the uh, alignment uh, de Karslan, which is the biggest alignment in uh, Karna. And I'm 746 feet away from it. Uh, might be accidental, who oh, no. knows? Uh, yeah, that's that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Whitney is very near where the points of the golden ratio would be. Uh, I fiddled with it and I just can't get it right, so I don't think... It's, uh, I don't think it's supposed to be there. So that's, you've drawn a line that's 465 miles long, all the way from <laughs> down to Karnak. Wow. That's amazing. You remember in, I think it was episode one, I suggested that Karnak might be the center of this culture. Okay, so the line is drawn from Karnak up to the... <laughs> well, it might be. Yeah. It might be the other way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've got to say that uh, it'd be difficult to miss a, mon a monument if you were drawing a line towards Karnak. But as I said, Kariskan is the biggest alignment. So these are the uh, alignments in uh, the, the main stone alignments. So a stone alignment in, uh, in Karnak is an array of stones in lines. And I've got a picture of one there, uh, on the next slide. So you can see what they look like. Yeah, that was three of them. That picture is hard uh, to see. What are we looking at there? Okay. So, so there's one there. That's the one we're near. There's one there, and there's one there. But these are all the sites that are in Karnak. So you can see what I mean. It's, yeah. Point point at it, and you're bound to hit something. Hmm. Right. So this wow. is yeah. Look what what uh, an alignment is, and this is closer up of it. Uh, so it's pretty impressive. Just about everyone that's played with megaliths has tried to get something out of these and failed. Um, I certainly don't know anyone that's satisfactorily done it. Uh, they certainly don't seem to be aligned to anything in the sky. Uh, this doesn't seem to be uh, significance in the spacing between them. We just don't know. Uh, and then this is big dolmens in the area. Wow. Um, I thought there was another slide on Karnak, actually, but there isn't. 
Now, if I go to this this line that came from the Devil's Arrows and went to the Devil's Quite in Whitney, I extend that into northern France. I get, I hit this stone. It's a very small stone. Uh, it's called the Devil's Ass. <laughs> we, we called me Di Diable. <laughs> So it's 304 <laughs> miles long, and the air at Whitney is 400 feet, and that is actually more accurate than the north-south line. Wow. So it's a very small stone. Right, but the problem with the really small ones is, I mean, they can be moved. You don't know. I mean, is that well, the... Well, that's, that's right. Yeah. 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 But, so... Um, can't move a hinge with stones on it, hinge, but uh, yeah. one stone that's relatively small can that's be moved right. around, yeah. Yeah. So. Are you suggesting they move the devil's ass? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Have you heard of the St. Michael's line? No. No, the most famous ley line in England is the St. Michael's line. And you can see it runs along here. It goes through Avery, St. Michael's Mount down here. It's supposed to uh, point to the sunrise. They've said on May Day, of course, it wouldn't be May Day. It'd be uh, it Beltane, and I can't remember the name, but anyway, whatever it is. Uh, you can also see that it misses some of them by uh, a reasonable distance, but it is the most famous one. There's another one that goes from St. Michael's Mount down into France and I think Italy and then on to uh, somewhere in the Middle East. Uh, and that's a St. Michael's line as well, but I'm not mm. bothered about that one. Um, so I've got my own version of it. The devil's equivalent of the St. Michael's <laughs> line. <laughs> The St. Michael's line is the uh, um, is the green one. The devil's equivalent is the red one. And you can see that they're pretty close. So I don't know what that says about our history and of the war between St. Michael and the devil, uh, but I just thought that was a piece of fun. And yeah, so, that's interesting. Oh, the devil's line passes through Luton, so anyone in England will know Luton and will probably know that the Devil's Line should pass through it. I'm sorry if you live there. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I found the Devil's Line and then I was talking to uh, Pete, so cheese in the uh, Discord, uh, and he said, have you heard of Hellstone? Well, just think of the name to begin with. Right, yeah. <laughs> so Hellstone is a town in Cornwall, and they have an annual festival called Flora Day on the 8th of May each year. Um, which... Wait. It's, it's somewhere near May Day. Okay. But now um, I'm thinking of Florida. Florida. Uh, Day. Oh, man. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Keep right. going. St. Michael's Day is the 8th of May. And Hel St. Michael's Church, uh, sorry, Helson Church is St. Michael's. So legend says many years, that should be a go, a fairy dragon disappeared, uh, appeared and dropped a large stone on an area known as the Angel's Yard. Hmm. Mm. The devil was carrying the stone that sealed uh, Hell's mouth uh, when he met St. Michael and dropped the stone on Hellstone. Hmm. So, got a reference for that one. I haven't got a reference for the one above. Now, Hellstone, if I extend my devil's line, goes to Hellstone. So, we appear to have a, an impact at Hellstone on the 8th of May. Um, and the impact is associated to St. Michael and the Devil. And we've seen that possibly St. Michael and the Devil might be related to the end of the Younger Dryas. Um, so the Yorkshire Complex has the, the associations with this through all that link network. 
Um, so trying to draw the attention there. So if we have a look at Stellarium uh, and we look at it uh, for the date of 9600 9, BC and we run it through. Now these red dots are meteor showers and they only come on at the dates when the meteors would be visible. Uh, so the date we have here, uh, all of these streams are visible. And the date for this is the 8th of May, 9700 BC. Wow. So all of those streams would be visible. Now, it's interesting actually because, um, and I've got mention of this elsewhere, but uh, the talk about uh, the day of death being Halloween and that being associated with uh, a meteor strike. Well, the trouble is with that is that these meteor showers, uh, the um, uh, radiant point, move in the sky over the years. So you can follow them from uh, October and eventually uh, after almost half a uh, a great year, we're back to them being in uh, in May. So I have my suspicions that the day of death isn't related to uh, these meaty showers. Hmm. But I don't know what to say about it, really. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes you think. So how long ago is that alignment? 9,700 uh, 9, BC, which is the end of the Younger Dryas. So. I'll finish. What so that's doing. like five, like roughly five and a half processional ages. It's it'll be three processional ages before the build of this. Yeah, so it'll be five and a half from where we are now. Yeah. So the start of the younger Darius was almost half a great year away from us, and the end was obviously for half half of a an age uh, inside of that break here. Right, so the start was like six processional ages, the end was five so, and a half. Because the thing I'm getting at is that um, for each processional age roughly being 30 degrees in the sky, yeah, yeah, that would actually put it back in, in May. Like the October would be May, essentially. May would be October. Right? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. We'd be in uh, the same position in the sky in May as we yes, would have as been we in, have Oct it in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is what this picture is intended to show. Okay. So on the 8th of May, it's possible they had an impact in 9,700. I mean, it's possible they could have had one any time. Yeah. Right, so we've, uh, I haven't drawn this to your attention, but there's uh, a site called the Devil's Tour, which is part of the Devil's Line, and it's down there. Um, so what's a, what's a tour? It's a granite outcrop. Okay. So on Dartmoor, there are quite a few granite outcrops. Now on the Devil's Tour, there is a standing stone, as we shall see. Uh, but, uh, so, if I, let me just get this right. So if I draw a line from the Devil's Point in, uh, uh, in Pembroke down to the Devil's Tor, it passes through this site called the Devil's Stone in Sheba, uh, Sheba, uh, and the air is 160 feet and it's like 80 miles long. Uh, 
And that line is the line of the major lunar standstill rise. <laughs> God, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not only that, but it's 90 degrees to the devil's line. I mean, the devil's line is you've got to do a sort of minimum uh, error thing to get the right angle exactly. Yeah. So I could be half a degree out on this. Uh, but I'm reasonably convinced that that's 90 degrees. Um. And that purple line, is that the St. Michael line? That's, uh, no, that's that line that came down from uh, new, uh, from the Devil's Quay at Oxford okay. down to the Cornwall one. Uh, the St. Michael's line at this point is too close to the Devil's line to be separate. Okay. So on Devil's Tour, there's a standing stone called Bear Down Man, and this is actually quite big. You can't tell from this picture. And it's also bloody miles from anywhere. So all of this is peat bog, so getting there is really hard. You won't uh, so it's, do it. Yeah, so then the question is, <laughs> where did the stone come from? They hauled it all the way out there to stand it yeah, up? Yeah. yeah. I mean, but peat maybe bogs. more surprising is this place here, Sheba, uh, they have a festival every year on the 5th of November uh, to turn this stone uh, to keep the devil away. And, of course, the 5th of November, as far as, as near uh, Samhain as we can probably tell at the distance away that we are, you know, in terms of time. And they turn the stone. Yeah, and they turn the stone. Wow. So it keeps the devil at bay for another 12 months. I and bet it, they have a really good booze up as well. <laughs> Five whiskeys in. Do they? Do you know how much they turn it? Is it one, like 360 degrees, or do they spin it? Up? <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. I'd like to go. You need to go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what the church in Shearbury is? <laughs> ah, wow. Seventh uh, November is qu cross quarter day. Samhain traditionally is the first November. Uh, we have a festival every fifth of November, which uh, is supposedly because uh, guy folks tried to blow up the House of Commons. Yeah. But one wonders whether these are all related to each other, and it goes back a lot further than that. Yeah, like maybe he chose that day for a reason. Yeah. 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 Could be. So, it was supposed to be the 8th of November. <laughs> remember, remember. The 8th of November. He was like, what was it, uh, the, uh, the 5th? fifth? <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> right, can we finish at that point then and I'll summarise and yeah. sure, talk about what we might be talking about in the future. Yes, absolutely. So, it's been fantastic. So I'll stop. Let's Should I stop the share? Are you going back? Are you still going to? Use this. Yeah, let's stop the share. All right. All right. So uh, let's go right back to the beginning. So we spoke about um, all of this starting when I was chatting to Shannon on the Discord, and we found a number of sites in Yorkshire that uh, looked interesting, and we found that the Thornborough Henges. Uh, were thought to be Orion's belt. I mean, I have no no idea how you find a, a, a star map just randomly, but it gives you a lead knowing that somebody thinks that. So I then went away and um, thought about it overnight and woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning with my 3 o'clock voices saying, uh, is there a star that represents the devil's arrows? And it wasn't an easy exercise to prove it. So it took me about three months because I didn't have any technology. Uh, but eventually, I think I proved it. I think I've probably, if I haven't proved it to you, I haven't done a very good job. <laughs> but I think um, I think that star map is definitely there. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty convincing. Yeah. Yeah, and they built it in. Uh, from there, we went to look at... Um, a possible star map uh, around Giza, which is a bit more complex. There's more of it, maybe a bit less accurate. Uh, and then talk about the people that 
Egypt built it and how they almost completely vanished uh, and left very little DNA. Uh, and the DNA they did leave seems to be uh, from the women's side, not the men's side. So All right. Quite what happened, we don't know. Uh, then episode two, we looked at the arrangement on the ground. So uh, that funny 141 degree angle and the 151 from uh, Canaban. So why would anyone put something at that angle? It might be just random. Could be. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. Uh, but there are a number of suggestions that have been put forward over the years. Some of them clearly rubbish. Some of them are right. Uh, or some of them have evidence to show that they might be right. Sorry, be a better way of expressing it. Uh, and uh, the ones that I favour at the moment, the uh, major lunar uh, uh, standstill of set is quite a good one. It's reasonably accurate, but... If we do an, another episode, you'll see that uh, Thombra is almost certainly a lunar temple and an observatory as well. Wow. Uh, and therefore, why would they extend that if they already could record it from uh, Thombra? Uh, and then we looked at the rising of Aldebaran and the alignment of 152 degrees from Canaban to uh, the Devil's Arrows, uh, pointing to the furthest south rising of Aldebaran. And the date of that is 9700 BC. Uh, yeah. 9700 yeah. BC is the catastrophic end of the Young Adrias, uh, and Plato's date, as near as makes no difference, for the end of uh, Atlantis. Uh, we then found that the uh, um, uh, the, the legend of the build, uh, which is that the devil threw stones from the top of Howe Hill, um, we found that there might be some evidence for at least them using Howe Hill uh, as a datum point for the build. Uh, and... Uh, we associated uh, Howe Hill with St. Michael because of the chapel on top of it. And St. Michael famously killed the uh, devil in Revelation. So it's possible that the chapel was built to kill the uh, legend of the devil's arrows being created by the devil. But it's also possible that it also points to that same date in the uh, in the uh, end of the Younger Dries because uh, the painting we found looks as though it's either got the Pleiades on it or the high uh, And Old Barn is uh, the star of St. Michael. We then looked at that line and found that I, exactly the midpoint of the line, if I took a right angle from it, it pointed uh, directly to the uh, summer solstice sunrise. And then if I drew that line backwards, I finished up passing the uh, southern door of Ripon Cathedral by about 100 feet and continued to draw it backwards. I will get to a standing stone on the moors. Uh, now, that standing stone has some significant measurements. We drew a, a, a big diamond-shaped square uh, that had the uh, ratio of five and six encoded into it. Uh, and there may be some significance of five and uh, five-sixths or six-fifths. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to keep looking for that, I think. We also found that our summer solstice line, uh, going from the centre line, finished up at um, Pudding Pie Hill. 
Pudding Pie Hill was, I think it was a thousandth of the world, uh, Earth's circumference from that centre line. Uh, and there are a few other coincidences in there to do with the build, or possible build. So I am proposing that Ripon was uh, an ancient and significant site going back to at least 3000 BC, uh, and that uh, the line of, or the entire layout really, is probably based around that uh, solstice line that goes from Ripon. So I think that's as far as we got in episode two. And then today we've looked at wider Yorkshire with a number of henges, uh, a big hill, and the Rudstone monolith. Uh, the Rudstone monolith took us through some interesting fairy tales uh, and also pointed out that we may be looking at some evidence uh, for procession in terms of the length of the Great Year and in terms of at uh, the size of the uh, solar system as well. Uh, from there, we looked at alignment. So alignment's quite easy to put together. Uh, so but don't necessarily be fooled by them. Try to look for something else that's common between the sites or look for a dead straight line um, with a lot of monuments on it. And then after alignments, we went into the devil's stuff. So we went south, as I was recommended to go, <laughs> and we found the devil's coin. <laughs> and the devil's coin is linked in with a whole mass of other devil's monuments over in Wales and down into Cornwall, and then back up on what we've called the devil's line, and we're back to looking at St. Michael and his churches uh, and the devil. And I think that's about it. Yeah. So it's like it, it seems like it's possible that embedded in the names and the stories about a lot of these sites is this idea of something evil throwing stones out of the sky. Yeah. Uh, which is... I mean, you know, and the and the possibility that it's pointing to this very ancient date, which would be the end of the Younger Dryas, is interesting because you know the the Comet oh, Research Comet Group they yeah. are talking about the beginning. Yes. For their torrids, you know, mm. meteors. It's amaz amazing how many people get this confused. Actually, yeah. So I was watching a video today where the guy was saying, and of course Plato uh, and the comet date. Coincide. Well, they do. They're no. 14 years apart. Yeah. <laughs> so you're finding it p maybe evidence that some of these structures may have alignments and lines that are pointing to many different significant astronomical events, but also a possibility of them pointing to this very ancient date. But how old do you think that these, that this like mega structure is? Uh, the standard model there is. 2800 BC. It's a little bit earlier, um, but not a lot. You think it's a little older than that date, but not much? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's what? Less, and there is there is an astronomical reason for okay. that date. Yeah. I don't want to show you that before. <laughs> oh, no, we're going to get to that later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is this is like asking Agatha Christie to name, name and in the third chapter. Tell me how this ends, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I would That's be great. happy to. Yes, yeah, so this is the last episode we're going to do before we go to Egypt. I would be happy to do more with you on this. It's great stuff. Yeah. Uh, even if you only have a segment or two, we can do half a show with you and then Kyle and I can, sure. you know, finish it out. Or if by the time we get back from Egypt, you've gone down another couple of rabbit holes and you've got more material. I mean, I'm 
I'm ready for well, it. Well, if, if, if I've got the church database, I might be able to progress that. I've yeah. got another couple of ideas. But, I, I, love uh, this, I love this idea with the church, like the idea that these churches or cathedrals or whatever, because they, they aren't necessarily designed by the church. Yeah. They're designed in many cases and built by possibly people who have been preserving ancient stories for a very long time. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the church does this too. Yeah. But I like the idea that that it's continuing to tell the story of the devil's throwing stones as opposed to like, well, we got to replace the devil's story with... You know what I mean? But it could be taken both ways, which is also... Yeah, well, they're, well, they're like, well, we, we have this guy that beat the devil. Yeah. Right? So we're going to put his church here. <laughs> yeah. I, I I like the idea that that, uh, that, uh, uh, that concept was used by the people yeah. who wanted to add more symbolism yes. to the story. Yeah. And yeah. modernize the story a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But who are these people? And do we still have them? Hmm. Yes, they are still here. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if uh, if you get a knock on the door tonight, you'll know. <laughs> Cancel your Egypt plans. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming with us. <laughs> so, so what I've got going forward then is a bit more in, in, on St. Michael. So we'll start with that. Okay. Uh, it's a good start. Uh, that won't take very long. And then we get into astronomical alignments. And I want to go very quickly through how you pick them up and how you uh, uh, draw them out on the map and decide what angles you're looking at. How many, how many whiskeys two. you need? <laughs> yeah, there might be one or two people who uh, uh, are interested in doing it themselves and oh, yeah. don't want don't want them all to fall down the same holes as I fell down. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole group of them out there. <laughs> um, of holes or people? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then look at some of them from Thornborough. Uh, and why I think the Devil's Arrows and Bridgestone don't have them. Or at least local ones, anyway. Uh and I don't know how many of those we want to go through. There's, I've found quite a few of them. I mean, we might find it a bit repetitive after a while. And we can always break out. And then look at the uh, numbers that I think are encoded. So uh, the golden ratio, pi, uh, E, which I think E appears in the sky, uh, but also on the ground. Um, so that's Euler's number 2.718, you know, the... Um, Exponential curve, Joby. Uh, and after we've then done that, just talk about the build date and how I got to the conclusion that I did. All right. You you need to take people to these sites, man. Yeah, you know, this, is, this is perfect. Time. This is perfect for setting up Snake Bros meetups. Like you've got plenty of people, I'm sure. Yeah. I know we have a whole bunch of UK snakes in the Discord. You guys could probably and we could probably have a meet one week. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then you guys could have a lot of whiskeys and come up with some <laughs> real wacky theories. <laughs> yeah, I've done that in the past and regressed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think there are a lot of people that would love to go see these sites with you and just pick your brain, talk about it, you know. Yeah. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah. Yep. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, you we'll should definitely see do See what we can get organised. Yeah. Uh, but um, I remember once when we were uh, walking part of the Pennine Way, which is a long-distance footpath for me, and we stopped off at this uh, um, uh, this pub and we had a few drinks and then we went back to... We were staying... We weren't camping. We were staying in a local guest house uh, and the boss was there and he got out this bottle of whiskey, which... We totally demolished. Next <laughs> day, <laughs> none of us could walk. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that sounds like a good meetup. <laughs> 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 All right, Martin, thank you so much. I yeah, really appreciate it, man. Thank, 
Good Thanks stuff. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing about Egypt. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we will be, like I said, we'll be posting content from Egypt while we're there as much as we can. And then when we come back, of course, we'll have the recaps and we'll get Ben on and, you know, who knows? You so know, who's always there? There's Ben. What's that? Who's there? There's Ben. Uh, it's just us and Ben and then uh, I guess about 100 people yeah. so far. Yeah. Yeah. And Yusuf, of course. Yeah, Yusuf. Yeah, obviously Yusuf. Yeah. Right, enjoy yourselves then, guys. Yeah. I'm All sure right. you will. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks, Martin. All and right. Thanks to everybody who watches and supports the show. Yes. We, we love you guys. Always have. Always will. Good night, Adamu. Get back to work. Okay, thank you. Thank you.